In studying the general equilibrium model and thinking about perfect competition across multiple markets, there are multiple approaches that we can take. One is we could use the equation approach using the mathematics to look at the quantitative results of general equilibrium theory. We will keep the model fairly simple and just still look at only a couple of markets, but you get the essence of how other markets interact with the equations of supply and demand and how we can have interaction effects between markets and get a balancing out but between and across markets as we go. So let's look at the mathematical approach with a textbook example. This one will be from the first edition of the Goolsby, Levitt, and Svierson microeconomics textbook on page 568. In this example, we are given the supply of both wheat and corn. The supply of wheat is equal to the quantity supplied is equal to the price of wheat. For corn, the quantity supplied is equal to the price of corn. Very simple supply curves. For demand, wheat is given by quantity demanded of wheat is equal to 20 minus PW plus price of corn. For corn, the quantity demanded is equal to 20 minus the price of corn plus the price of wheat. Now, if we look at these equations, you should be able to understand what's happening here between wheat and corn. It might not look as obvious at first, but we have to understand that the price of corn is impacting the demand for wheat and vice versa. The price of wheat is impacting the quantity demanded for corn. These two goods are interrelated. So when two goods are interrelated, they will either be uh, substitutes or complements here. And so we want to think about how are these two goods related? Well, if we think about this, let's look at this equation right here. When the price of corn goes up, what happens to wheat's quantity demanded? So if the price of corn is increasing, what happens to the quantity demanded for wheat? Well, obviously that's going to increase as well. So when the price of corn goes up, the quantity demanded for wheat goes up. Is this a complement or a substitute? Which one of those has demand going up when the price of the other good goes up? When the price of one good goes up and the demand for another goes up, those two goods are substitutes. If the price of Coke goes up, my demand for Pepsi will go up because I view those two goods as being substitutes for one another. If Coke gets twice as expensive, I might be switching towards more Pepsi. And so my demand for Pepsi will go up. Thus, in this example, wheat and corn are substitutes with one another. Let's see how, when something changes in the market, we could reach an equilibrium. So let's just get the original equilibrium here. We know that the supply is equal to quantity equals price for both wheat and for the uh, corn example. Within wheat, we also know its demand curve is equal to QD equals 20 minus PW plus PC. We also know that in equilibrium, the quantity supplied for wheat has to equal the quantity demanded. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, well, since we know the quantity supplied here has to equal the quantity demanded, that means that these two equations, the outcomes of those are going to be equal to one another. So what we can do is we can simply say, okay, let's rearrange these equations. We take this one and put it over here and we take this demand equation and we put it over here and we can just kind of cancel out these quantity demanded because we know that they're equal. It, these have to be equal to each other. The outcomes of both of those quantities have to be equal to each other. So what we can do is simply reduce down and say that, well, of course, then the price of wheat right, has to be equal to this 20 minus PW plus PC. Right. So we're just basically taking the knowledge that in equilibrium, quantity supplied equals quantity demanded for that one particular good. And then what we can do is we can reduce the price of wheat down to a little bit more simple of an equation. You could repeat this same process and solve for the price of corn with corn supply and demand equations. Since we have the exact same setup, the exact same equations for everything, 
uh, other than just kind of switching the price of wheat and the price of corn, we also know that the price of corn is equal to this 10 plus PW divided by 2. Right? So we could do the exact same thing, and you should do that to solve through. So just set quantity supplied equals quantity demanded for wheat, and then do the same thing, set quantity supplied equals quantity demanded for corn. At this point, we have a system of equations type problem. A system of equations is a collection of two or more equations with the same set of unknowns. In solving a system of equations, we try to find the values for each of the unknowns that will satisfy every equation in the system. So we know that the price of wheat is equal to 10 plus the price of corn divided by 2. And we know that the price of corn is equal to 10 plus the price of wheat divided by 2. We can reduce this as well. Simply acknowledge that we have the price of wheat is equal to 10 plus, and then the price of corn divided by 2. And so what we've done is we can say, okay, well, we have the price of corn here divided by 2. Because the price of corn, right, we know what that equals. That can just fill in into our equation. So we can substitute this element here, this 10 plus PW divided by 2, in for that price of corn right there. And then we can try and solve because now what we've done is we've eliminated the price of corn variable. We're down to just price of wheat variables because we're taking the corn's uh, equation and just having it in terms of wheat. And so we can reduce this down further and we can do the basic algebra from there to solve for the price of wheat now that we have eliminated one of the variables and we only have one remaining variable. And so here we get the price of wheat equaling 20. You can go ahead and pause the video and work through the math just to get that exercise in to see that this is true. To get corn's price, we can take the price of wheat is now answered. We now have the price of wheat is 20. And we still have that equation for corn that we have reduced down to. The price of corn is equal to 10 plus PW divided by two. So to find the price of corn, we can take this equation. The price of corn is equal to 10 plus PW divided by 2. Right? And we can just say, OK, we're going to work from this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, shoot, we have two variables here again. So what do we need to do? We need to substitute one in. Well, what's really nice is we know the price of wheat is 20. So we're just going to substitute that in here so that we're left with just one remaining variable. And so instead of just leaving the price of wheat here, we're going to fill in 20 for the price of wheat. So we can say the price of wheat is now 20. So now that's eliminated one of our variables from our equation. Here we're left with an equation with just one variable, and then we could solve for that. And we can work through the math and see that the price of corn will also be 20. As these two uh, markets mirror each other, we will end up with the same answers. So now, now that we have solved for both the price of wheat and the price of corn, we can put these solved prices back into the original supply or demand equations to determine the quantities. In this case, we will, in the wheat market, look at the supply, and in the corn market, we will look at demand. But we could do this either way to determine the quantities because we have a standard market here where the quantity supplied will equal the quantity demanded. So we could plug it back into either equation. So looking at the wheat example here, what we know is that the quantity supplied of wheat is equal to the price of wheat. And luckily we have already solved for the price of wheat. The price of wheat is 20. And so then we know that the quantity supplied of wheat will also be 20. So the quantity in the wheat market is 20. In the corn market, we take the demand function instead. And we have that demand quantity demanded is equal to 20 minus the price of corn plus the price of wheat. We can substitute in both prices that we already know, which are 20. And so what we end up with is we get the quantity demanded of corn is equal to 20 minus 20 plus 20, which just equals 20. 
And so since both of these markets mirrored each other, their supply functions were the same as each other and the demand functions were the same as each other, just a simple mirroring here, we end up in both markets with the same outcome. The price of wheat is 20, the price of corn is 20, the quantity of wheat is 20, the quantity of corn is 20. So everything is 20 here. But as your textbook goes on to show, the textbook example that we're using here, what happens if we end up with a little change in some of these markets? What happens if we're still given the same supply for wheat and still given the same, the same supply for corn and the demand for wheat remains unchanged, but the demand for corn has increased. Corn used to have the same demand function basically as the wheat, except we just kind of flipped around the priced variables here. But now what has happened is that the demand for corn has increased, maybe through some other mandate for renewable fuels, or maybe through just consumer preferences, who knows, but the demand for corn has increased. Well, what we do is we follow the exact same process that we just went through to understand what happens within this market. We have to resolve the system of equations to understand what the quantity demanded of wheat will be, what the price of wheat will be, what the quantity demanded of corn will be, and what the price of corn will be. So we follow the same exact process that we did before. We reduce our equations within each market, knowing that our quantity supplied equals our quantity demanded within that market. Then we rearrange the resulting equation to be solved for that market's price variable. So we just smoosh together the first equations within the market for say wheat in that first step. And then what we do is we say, okay, the resulting element of that, now let's rearrange this and solve for the price of wheat. We repeat this first two steps of the process for the other market, for the corn market. We say quantity supplied in the corn market is equal to the quantity demanded in the corn market. We can smush all of those equations together knowing that the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And then we can solve for the price of corn. Now that we have the price of wheat equals something with the price of wheat equaling something that has the price of corn in it as well. And we have the price of corn equaling something in equation which has the price of wheat in it as well, we have a little bit of a conundrum because we have two variables and two equations and we can't solve for any one of them, except for if we do a system of equations by substituting one of the price variables equation into the other price variables equation as we showed before. And then what we can do is now we could be left with just one variable. Say we substitute everything into the price of wheat equals equation. Now all we have is the variable PW We've eliminated the PC variable. And what we can do is we can solve for the other price given this newly solved price as well. Then finally, we can plug the relevant prices back into the relevant supplier demand equations to determine our quantities. Go ahead and try this given our new demand condition for the price of, or for the market of corn. So within this textbook example, the second part of it here, where we have a new demand equation, where the demand for corn has increased, the result that you should uh, uh, attain when you do the mathematics is that the price of wheat is 24, the price of corn is 28, the quantity of wheat 24, and the quantity of corn 28. Now notice that before the answer to all of these was 20, right? The quantity of wheat was 20, the quantity of corn was 20, the price of corn was 20, the price of wheat was 20. All of them were 20. And now it kind of makes sense when we look at the market for corn that the price of corn and the quantity of corn goes up because the demand for corn went up. But what we're showing here is that not only will the price and quantities of corn go up, but due to general equilibrium effects, and they, these two goods being substitutes, we also see an increase in the quantity of wheat and the price of wheat. An increase in the demand for corn leads not only to higher corn prices and quantities, but also to higher wheat prices and quantities. Right? And we show that outcome mathematically by moving from this 20 quantity for wheat to the 24 quantity and by the 20 price for wheat to the 24 price. This is showcasing impacts of one market on an entirely different market. 
one that is related in this case via the, the two goods being substitutes. And so we get this interaction effect, this cross market effect going on where we have within the perfect competition model, we get these across market effects, right? It's this general equilibrium math here is showing us how market behavior is interacting across market with cross market influences and still getting prices and quantities that simultaneously equate supply and demand within multiple markets.